Whether it's turbocharged or supercharged, like our combination, what's the difference in power between a good intercooler and a great one? In this video, we show the power gains offered by an intercooler upgrade on a supercharged 427 stroker. Now we ran our stroker motor first naturally aspirated, then after the installation of a D1SE supercharger and the standard air-to-air -air intercooler core. We then upgraded the core. So how much power was the intercooler upgrade worth on our 427 stroker? Let's find out. Before we get to the results, it's very important to understand two things about intercooler. Now, the ideal intercooler does two things. It flows well and it dissipates heat. The problem is these two things are often at odds. You see, it's easy to get the intercooler to flow well, but then it doesn't dissipate heat. And it's easy for it to dissipate heat, but then it doesn't flow well. So when you choose an intercooler, make sure you get one that does both. Before we get to our intercooler test, we need to take a look at the test motor. Our test motor was a 427 LS stroker that featured an LSX block and forged internals from CP and Carrillo. We also installed a stage four LS7 cam from Brian Tooley Racing and topped the short block with a set of CNC ported LS7 heads from TrickFlow. The TrickFlow heads were fed by an MSD atomic intake and finishing touches included a set of 89 pound fast injectors a set of inch and seven eighths long tube headers, and a Holly HP management system. With the motor ready and run, let's check out the results. So if we take a look at the power curve, I will get rid of this fuel flow data. Take a look a little bit better. So the 427 LSX motor produced a peak of 656 horsepower at 6200, 6100 RPM and 592 foot-pounds. Um, actually, this motor produced less power than I thought it was going to. I mean, it was a 427, it had LS7 heads, it had that um, Ryan Tooley Stage 4 LS7 cam, which we know has worked really well. I mean, it's made this much at the tire before in some of these motors. so. This one uh, was not performing as well as we thought, but not a big deal. We were going to add boost to it anyway. So this is the NA motor. You know, it's got a nice, had a decent torque curve here. Um, I'd like to see the power climb a little bit more, but it was about to because when we had the Pro Charger with a rising boost curve, it's definitely going to cure that problem. So now let's take a look and see what happens when we add boost from the, from the Pro Charger. So we'll take a look at what we added in terms of that kit and the intercooler, and then we'll do our intercooler upgrade. After establishing the baseline with our 427 stroker, it was time for some boost. Now boost was supplied by a ProCharger D1SC supercharger. That supercharger was run with a standard air-to-air -air intercooler core. That core featured a three inch inlet and three inch outlet, which we fed with three inch tubing from the supercharger to the core and from the core up to the throttle body. With our supercharger installed and run, let's check out those results. Now let's take a look and see what happens when we add the ProCharger D1SE supercharger to the mix. This is our naturally aspirated curve again, as we see. 656 horsepower, 593 foot-pounds of torque. Now if we add the ProCharger to this, and this is with their standard air-to-air -air intercooler core, three inch in, three inch out. And as you can see from our photos that we'll show you, there's, um, we used a big fan in front of the air-to-air. -air. Uh, might not simulate quite what it does out on the road. Um, certainly more than you get when you're standing still at a stoplight, but maybe not quite as much as you get at 100 or 150 miles an hour, whatever your trap speed's gonna, gonna be. But we did what we could on the dyno to simulate airflow through the core. And this thing worked fairly well. We'll go over um, the charge temperature drops uh, through the core and stuff, but they were more than 100 degrees. So equipped with the Pro Charger, the power output jumped to 943, 943 horsepower at 6600, and 794 foot-pounds of torque at 5700. And as you can see, the rising boost curve from the Pro Charger pushed uh, the horsepower peak up by 500 RPM from 6100 to 6600, and pushed the peak torque up by 700 RPM from 5000 NA to 5700 with the supercharger. 
So now that we've seen what the power output is with the Pro Charger and the small standard air-to-air -air core, let's find out what happens when we upgrade the core to their larger three and a half inch uh, diameter in and out core. The core is both thicker and has bigger inlets and outlets. Let's find out what happens. After running the D1SE Supercharger on our 427 stroker with the standard core, it was time for an upgrade. As you can see from these photos, the upgrade core offered a three and a half inch inlet and outlet. To accommodate those larger openings, the core itself was much thicker. So not only did it offer more flow, it offered more cooling. Now the intercooler core upgrade was combined with a tubing upgrade. Three and a half inch tubing from the supercharger to the core and three and a half inch tubing from the core up to the throttle body. So let me know in the comments, do you think that the tubing size had something to do with the power gain? Or was it just the core? Was it both? Let me know in the comments. Let's get to the results. Now let's see what happened after we installed the intercooler upgrade from Procharger with that bigger core as we showed in, those, in these photos. Upgrade from a three inch inlet and out up to a three and a half. It's also a thicker core, so definitely should flow more. And so this is our NA motor. This is after we installed the Pro Charger Supercharger. Went up to from 656 horsepower to 943 horsepower. Had a peak boost of 9.9 .9 pounds. And here's what happened after we added, after we replaced that three inch in and out intercooler core with the three bigger three and a half. So as you can see, we got a big jump in power. Now the green is the change in power from the intercooler core. And all we did was change the core. We didn't change the pulley. We didn't do anything else. Had the same air fuel, same timing, no change in the pulley, but changing the core improved the airflow from the supercharger into the motor. So the boost, the peak boost actually went up when we changed the core. The added flow offered by this bigger core improved the boost into the motor. So the peak boost went up from 9.9 .9 with a small core up to 10.7 pounds of boost. And the peak power output with this new larger core jumped up to 1,003 horsepower. That's right, four digits at 6,500 RPM and 865 foot-pounds of torque. Interestingly enough, at 5,300 RPM. So the peak torque actually occurred lower with the bigger intercooler core and we suspect because on the D1SC running a thousand horsepower, we're getting up near the flow limits of the supercharger. Um, if you're going to go over a thousand horsepower, it might be a good idea to step up from that uh, D1SC to something like an F1A and F1A94, something like that. Then you can. Uh, make some real serious power. But as this shows, stepping up in that intercooler core size made a big change. Now we still had good cooling, um, all we, but we did have um, a bunch more flow. So the intercooler has to be sized, both so you can cool that charge air, which you definitely want, but also so that you don't restrict the flow of that charge air. And that's what this shows. Putting that big intercooler core, you know, for the thousand horsepower level, definitely a big plus on this supercharged combination. Now that we've shown the power gains offered by the intercooler upgrade, let's take a look at the boost curves. The final graph we wanna look at really quick is the change in boost offered by the upgrade on the intercooler from the smaller intercooler to the larger. So if we take a look, this is the boost curve provided by the Procharger D1SC. Starts off down here at three and a half pounds, 3,500 ends up at 9.9 .9 pounds at 6,600. So now if we take a look at what happens when we added the big intercooler, basically we have more boost everywhere. And, and we see that the gain in boost picks up with RPM, but then starts to tail off a little bit at the end. That actually tells us that um, we're actually getting near the flow limit of that supercharger. Uh, I guess it's possible that that air to air intercooler also could be getting restrictive with the increased flow, but I don't really think that that's it. I think since we're over a thousand horsepower, we're kind of getting near the flow limit of the blower itself. But anyway, this is the change in boost. Uh, we saw the biggest point 
we saw a change of 1.3 PSI at 5600 RPM. So additional flow from the cooler, more boost, more power, you know, picked up like 60 horsepower at the peak. It's a good gain. So what do we learn from this test? Well, we learned two things. First of all, an intercooler has to cool the charge temperature. Whether the boost comes from a turbo or a supercharger like this test, the intercooler has to cool that charge temperature. Cooler air, more power, and it's a lot safer. But the other thing an intercooler has to do is not restrict that airflow. And that's what we saw in this test. By installing the larger core that flows more, we were able to pick up boost and pick up power. So make sure when you're choosing an intercooler, pick one that cools well and flows well. Because we picked up over 60 horsepower on our supercharged combination, and those gains would only increase if we went up in power. If we installed an F1A94 and turned the boost up even more, that intercooler upgrade would offer even more power. I'm Richard Holdner. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to like and share, subscribe, ring the bell. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this test. See you next time.